Welcome to Nanaima Yacht Charters. I'm standing here just astern of Audley Rose, which is our Bavaria 45. We're going to give you a short video of some of the systems on the boat, and we hope that that helps you settle in. Enjoy your sail, and thank you for choosing the Nanaima Yacht Charters. Right, the shore power cable comes in from the transom. We'll show you where that plugs into when we're in the cockpit. But it comes around and into here, and it's just a twist and then a pull out. Please remember to detach that before you go. More importantly, when you do disconnect, make sure your shore power inside the boat on the uh, 120 volt panel is switched off. So switch that off, then come here and disconnect that. Coil it up nicely and take it with you because you're going to need it wherever you go point out the exhaust. This is the exhaust for the heater and that's about as close as you can get with one of these lines because that is absolutely burning. It's from the burner, uh, your diesel fired heater and if this is badly placed or is allowed to go slack and in front of that it will burn through that size rope in about 30 seconds. So please take care especially dinghy painters and of course dock lines and your shore power behind the steering position and here you can quite easily see the shore power cable that plugs in there and if you fold these boards back like that it gives you access to all the engine instruments this is a single leap for morse control in the 12 o'clock position you should be able to push that button in and select throttle without going into gear so that's exactly what i've done a little bit of throttle uh, to start the engine you hit the power button here you hold that down you can see that light up and go and then you come along here and hit that and you hit the start button right Oper operating the anchor windlass now the windlass remote is kept on a bracket inside here just inside on the starboard side of the of the ladder going into the forepeak so that is permanently kept there and you have a down and an up button. The engine must be running at 1500 RPM and it's probably a good idea to run the engine for about 10 minutes in the morning before picking up the anchor because that will get a lot of surface charge up into the batteries before you make the, the demanding load on picking the anchor and chain up. The other thing to bear in mind is please, this tether should be on here so that the wind doesn't suddenly blow it shut while you're working with the remote. And as I said, uh, it's simple up and down, run the engine at 1500 RPM, go to the instrument panel and the emblem of the anchor is clearly seen there. And you'd switch that on, the little light will come on, and then you'd come up here and you'd be able to work the anchor windows. Okay, and that's it. And that's all there is to working the wind. This is a very, often overlooked water fill point you can see you have to open up the four peak hatch lid and you'll see up in the starboard corner a water fill point that fills your water tank which is just directly below the ladder so don't forget to fill that one and the others are clearly marked and they're found on the on the deck clock 
and a little idle just below a thousand RPM. Uh, and then you hit the stop button. Don't switch the power off, because if you switch the power off first, there's, a, there's no way that the solenoid will work. So this is the first thing. You hit stop and hold down until it stops. And then to switch it off, you press the power button off and you hold that for a few seconds until the, 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 the actual gauge stops working. We're going to start the engine again and show you how to work the, um, the, the bow thruster. So again, a little bit of throttle from the 12 o'clock position. Press the on button, you'll see the LCD comes alive and so does that. You wait for your two bips, and there you go. And that's how you start it again, and we just give it a bit of throttle up to 1500 RPM. And this is the bow thruster. To switch it on, you hit both of those on buttons, and you'll see the yellow light light up. Now the most important thing with the bow thruster is you never use it for more than three seconds. Okay, so uh, if you use it for three seconds, you let it cool down for six before using it again. And you just press whichever way you want to go. And that's it. And then to switch off, you just switch and hold down until that light goes off. There you are. And that's off. Back to neutral. Let it idle. and then you switch the stop button off and hold that. That's it. And you should see this go off and then eventually the gauge will drop off and that's after about 10 or 15 seconds. This seat that I'm, I'm on, sitting on at the moment folds down and gives wonderful access and a swimming uh, platform for you. And this is the control for it. I always like to use this with the engine running and uh, that, that helps uh, cover the batteries. But you can undo the, these clips, move them out of the way, and this will cascade down. Of course, we're too close to the dock to demonstrate it, so you'll want at least five feet away from the dock for this to fold down on. In this locker on the port side is the propane tank, and this must always be off when not in use. So since we've been using the stove and we're done with it, we just shut that off. I'm going to explain to you about these little locker lids on the transom here. It's got a, 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 a sailing brace, what we call a sailing brace, which actually gives you a canted uh, finish like that, so you can brace yourself when you're sailing on, on that tack. Also underneath here, you'll see the W for the water, that's a water fill point, and you've got a, um, access directly to the top of the rudder, and that's important because that's where your auto helm would drop onto. And again, this is your sailing brace. When employed like that and held there, it gives you that nice angle to which to brace yourself on when you're sailing. So I'm going to shut that now and drop it down. And again on this side, same thing, same configuration. Also access to the top of the rudder. And over here you have a diesel. You see the big D, so please don't confuse them. That's diesel on that side and water on this. Underneath here, just open that up, give it a twist, and you'll see you've got good access, wonderful storage. The dinghy oars have already found a place in there, plus there's a 600 foot reel of floating line that gets attached to the, uh, the push bit. As a safety feature, this is a bilge pump with a built-in handle. You just pluck it off like that and pump away, and it's a very effective build pump. So when you finish with it, just snap it back into place and that's it. So the boat is equipped with a Ray Marine C90W, which is a very useful uh, plotter and uh, GPS. And underneath here, we actually have your autopilot controls over here and the power thruster. Now to work the power thruster, the engine must be running and you have to press both buttons together and then the little light will come on showing you that it's powered up. And we don't want you to use this for more than three seconds in any one direction at any time. So if you give a, 
a port bow thrust for three seconds, allow it to cool down for exactly the same period of time before using it again. So that's your bow thruster, very handy for docking. Yeah, you've got your spare propane tank, you've got a spare dinghy seat, you've got some spare lines, you do have a cable to secure the dinghy if you feel that you're in a place that warrants securing the dinghy. You've got a deck brush and some top up oil. On this side, you'll find the mother bottle. Uh, that's your spare domestic bottle, the one that I just showed you previously was for the barbecue. And of course a hose, a spare prop, a whole lot of bits and pieces like uh, filters. There is a dinghy pump in there as well, and a boat hook. And access is good, you just pick the steps up, it's all hydraulically operated. And then you just lift it up here and I'll just show you a few important things. To note, it's a Volvo engine. It's oil fill is up in here, and the dipstick is down on the side. You can see the yellow handle, that is the dipstick. This side panel in the uh, starboard aft cabin comes away and gives you good access to that. And of course a serpentine belt. Um, up against the bulkhead in the back you can see a plastic bottle and a clear line of coolant there. And it should be between the high and the low points exactly as it is now. So you don't have to worry about that. The black plastic container is your strainer for the raw water coming into the engine. So if your engine ever is overheating, you can go down, switch the water coming off into it, unscrew the top, clean the basket and put it back. Um, we do that before every charter, so you shouldn't have to, have to do that unless you pick up some eelgrass or something that will impede the water coming into the boat. So that's where you'd go, your water strainer. So oil, oil fill, strainer, and um, antifreeze or coolant up on the bulkhead. Right over here is the impeller that drives the, the water through the, through the engine and cools it. If your impeller goes, this is very, very easy to, to access. You just undo these small hex bolts, take the cover plate off, and you'll see the impeller. We have in your toolbox a spare impeller for each engine. The engine start battery is right there. Here is the domestic battery switch. And if you rotate into the horizontal position, the domestic batteries are off. Click it back on so that it's up and down in the vertical position, and that's on. DC panel, and um, everything's fairly clearly marked with an emblem. There's your anchor, and that had to be on before you could use the anchor. So you come along, and when you press it, it'll indicate it's on with the light. And if you go through, this is the bilge. You can hear it running, and I'll switch that off. And that's your stereo, that's your autopilot, and instruments. Um, this is for your water pressure, and also the electric head. Over here, you've got your shower pump out and the panel lights and the refrigerator. So everything is listed here. This is useful. If you press this, it will show you whether the lights are on. So that's the masthead light, that's your steaming light, there's your deck light, and there's your bow and then your stern. If the lights don't come on, like that one's flashing, it indicates that the bulb is in fact out. So quite useful. We must remember that we need to check that. And then these are your cabin lights. So I'm just going to switch them off. And this here is your uh, 120 volt shore power plug there. If you wanted to plug into that socket, it would give you 120 volts. Um, this is your charger on and your inverter on. And this is your water heater. This is the main breaker. That's what you would switch off when you're disconnecting the shore power. So very simple, straightforward panel. Down here, we'll switch on the instruments and we'll be able to operate this. This is your heater, and to operate the heater, you just dial this all the way over and then you hit that button. You'll see the toggle will light up, and this, and you can hear it's now firing up. And remember what I said about that exhaust that will blow very hot air in a moment or two while it fires up. So to switch on the VHF, you need to come up here where it says VHF on F4, press that, the light will come on. 
Then you can come down here and you'll see there's a power and volume control. You press that on and th three seconds later that will come up. And here's your WX channel. Um, you can press that and hold it down and you'll go back to regular channels and then you can change frequency over here. If you want to get back to WX you have to press and hold and now you're back at WX. And then to switch it off you actually press the power button down and hold for four seconds like that and then off it goes. Right, so once the heater is, once the boat's warm enough you can switch it off. This is your thermostat control and then you can switch this off. Now you'll notice it'll carry on running but it take it goes through a cool down uh, process and will run until the, the element is cool enough and then it'll switch itself off. Here you'll see a little F1 button and it's labeled head. Press and hold that down. The Ford head is an electric uh, vacuum flush system. Let's go and have a Right, here we are with electric vacuum flush and you press this first and it will flush away okay and then you do your business and then hit flush down there and that's it so very simple just two buttons to push and it'll keep it nice and clean big valve with the red handle is your discharge for your holding tank. You don't have a macerator pump in these boats, it's a gravity discharge. So all you're going to do is leave that open and the holding tank will empty itself. Up here, and I'm pointing up inside the cupboard, is a valve that will select either forward tanks or aft tanks and there is a description of it up in there. The head itself is a standard Jabsco toilet and you'll notice a black lever at the top there with the lever as it is on the right hand side that means it's in the off position it's the dry bulb position when you get to using it you need to move that lever across to the left and pump on the handle and that will flush and uh, keep the toilet clean the more pumps that you give it the better it's going to be and the cleaner it will remain there it is on the dry bulb position that's on the dry bulb position you unlock the door by twisting it and then you move this across to the wet bowl. You can see a picture of, of the bowl with water in it. This will now draw water in. As you can see, here comes the water now. And it's pumping out at the same time. And you do that, the more times you pump that, the cleaner the toilet will be. Make sure that when you've finished, it's on the dry bowl position. And you can pump the, the residue of water in the system. You can pump that out. So it's a very straightforward and standard process. The waste comes from here straight into the holding tank. And it's only when you open that big valve that we showed you earlier that it will, um, it, that it will disperse itself into the ocean. You can, if you want to, have it pumped out at a pump out station. Unfortunately in Canada they are few and far between. But you can have it out and you'll see the pump out uh, fill point or the pump out point on the deck is clearly marked waste. So to switch on the stove or the oven, you've got LPG quite clearly marked here. Hit F3, that light will light up. Then we go and switch the bottle on, and the bottles are kept in the cockpit. We're going to light the stove. Uh, a couple of things you've got to do first. On the DC panel, you must switch on the, um, the LPG switch, and that will indicate on the panel. You need to open up the bottle which we always ask that you shut when it's not in use so in the little locker next to the port steering position you will open that and switch on the propane then you'll come over here and you can switch the on and you can hear a cluck from the solenoid operating and that light will come on so the propane will now pass through to here you push in and twist in anti-clockwise direction and then you light and then you can let go after about five seconds when the thermostat the thermocouple kicks in. Over here, you've got that in, it's indicating this one, so you press it in, do the same thing, and away you go. So you're now cooking with gas. Now the oven, you do the same, twist it in, and light the 
oven element and select the temperature that you want and you'll have a working oven. The stove is locked with the gimbal lock. And that gimbal locks down here. You just lift that, move it across, and it'll ungimbal. At this top, please don't shut that down until this is cooled down a lot. Fridge switches on on the panel. There's a little emblem showing little icicles. You switch that on. And if you come across to here, you'll see that your thermostat control is right there. So you select the temperature you want, and your fridge will start working. I usually like to leave the fridge running when I'm um, on the dock and I've got shore power working and charging the battery at the same time or whenever I'm running the engine I have that on. Leaving it on for any length of time while at anchor will flatten your house batteries so take caution on that. You have safety equipment on board in each hanging locker on the boat you'll find two life jackets so please check those make sure that they fit you and make sure you have enough. Um, over here on the little cupboard next to the instrument panel, you've got flares, spare winch handles, wooden bungs, and a first aid kit. So all important stuff, you just have to remember where it is. Thank you so much for watching our short video presentation. I do hope that this helps you on your trip. We sincerely hope that you have a great trip. If there are any questions that you have pertaining to the operation, You've also got the manual that you can refer to, and you can call me, 1-250-729-5592. Have a great holiday, and thank you for sailing with the Namu Yacht Charter.